Welcome to Implicit Differentiation. My name is Tuesday J. Johnson. I'm a lecturer at the University of Texas El Paso and an assistant professor at Doniana Community College. This lecture is for Math 1411 Calculus at UTEP, Chapter 2, Differentiation. Section 2.5, Implicit Differentiation, comes from Larson's 11th edition of the Calculus text. So let's talk about some terminology. An explicit function is a function that explicitly tells you how to find one of the variable values, such as y equals f of x. y is by itself and is defined, defined explicitly in terms of x. An implicit function is less direct and that no variable has been isolated and in many cases it can't be isolated. A nice simple little example might be xy equals 6. We can isolate y if we wanted to, but in x squared minus xy plus y squared minus 4 equals 0, we could isolate y and end up with two equations. It's possible, it's not very easy, and I gotta tell you, nobody really wants to do that very often. So here's some guidelines for implicit differentiation. Write these down, memorize these, know these. First of all, we're going to differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x. So x is always going to be our input, x is always our independent variable, and so x is always going to be our variable for differentiation. This will use the chain rule for all terms involving y. If you need a review of the chain rule, please see my chain rule video. Collect all terms involving dy dx on the left side of the equation and move all other terms to the right side of the equation is step two. Once we have everything with the dy dx on a one side, factor it out and then divide to solve for dy dx. It's important that we end up with an answer, quote, answer of dy dx equals. So let's find dy dx by implicit differentiation for x squared minus y squared equals 25. So always remember that y is a function of x. So we're using the chain rule. y is on the outside, x is on the inside. Anytime they take the derivative of y, you're gonna end up with a y prime. That's the derivative of the inside. So for x squared, the derivative is 2x minus sign. For y squared, the derivative is 2y, right? Derivative of the outside, bring down the two, leave the y alone. But don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the inside, so that dy dx must be there. And on the right-hand side, the derivative of 25 is 0. So, putting this all in line back and back into an equation form, we'll have 2x minus 2y dy dx equals 0. Now solve. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. To get dy dx by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 2y. The negative 2's cancel out, and I'll get x over y. It is possible to use a y prime at this step, but I like putting the dy dx just so I don't make a mistake and forget that it's a prime and not a 1 or get mixed up somehow. So this, this dy dx differential operator is what it's called, is a great reminder that I have to solve for this. I need my answer. I want dy dx by itself. So I want dy dx on one side and everything else. Uh, the rule on the other. So another example, x cubed plus y cubed equals 64. We know the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared plus y cubed, remember y is a function of x, so the derivative of y cubed is 3y squared times the derivative of the inside. We have no idea what y is equal to explicitly, so we have to write the generic derivative for it when we're using implicit differentiation. Again, the derivative of a constant is 0. Solving for dy dx, I'm going to subtract 3x squared. I'm going to divide both sides by 3y squared and simplify. Now, let's make it harder. x squared y plus y squared x equals negative 2. And we want to find dy dx by implicit differentiation. So we're going to use the product rule twice. x squared times y is x squared dy dx plus y times 2x, right? First, derivative of the second plus second, derivative of the first. Plus, and then we'll have the product rule again. y squared x will have first y squared 
derivative of x is 1 plus second x times the derivative of y squared. Well, we know the derivative of y squared is 2y, and because y is a function of x, we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, and that's our dy dx. Let's put this together. We have our first product rule, x squared dy dx plus y times 2x plus our second product rule, y squared times 1 plus x times 2y dy dx equals, and again, I have a constant on the right-hand side, so the derivative of a constant is 0. But we want to find dy dx, we still have to solve. We have to simplify. This is the last step I had on the last slide. So just a rewrite so we can see where we're going here. I'm going to clean things up. x squared dy dx plus 2xy. I like them in alphabetic order. It doesn't really matter, but it looks nicer. y squared times 1 is y squared. And x times 2y dy dx is 2xy dy dx. Now remember, we want to collect all the dy dx's on one side, anything that doesn't have a dy dx, 2xy and y squared, we're going to take to the other side. So minus 2xy minus y squared on the right. Everything with the dy dx is on the left because I'm going to factor out the dy dx. What, are, what remains? x squared plus 2xy. To get dy dx by itself, now these coefficients that I had are going to be in my denominator minus 2xy minus y squared all over x squared plus 2xy. Solve for dy dx. Oh, what can make this better? Let's use some trig functions. Cotangent of y equals x minus y. Derivative of cotangent, it's a co-function, so the derivative is negative. The derivative of cotangent, right, my outside, is cosecant squared, so minus cosecant squared. Leave the inside alone, that's y. Multiply by the derivative of the inside, but we don't know what that is, right? We just know it's dy dx, so derivative of the inside. Anytime I, multi uh, I find the derivative of something involving the variable y, I'm always going to have a dy dx. Equals derivative of x is 1 minus the derivative of y, dy dx. I'm going to add dy dx to both sides. That way I have all my terms with the dy dx on the left. I'm going to leave my 1 on the right. Factor the dy dx out. Don't forget the 1 minus cosecant squared y. Divide to solve for dy dx. This first step is the only time I used calculus. Everything else is algebra. Algebra is key to learning and understanding calculus. All right, so why do we care about implicit differentiation? Let's try a similar example. But this time we want to find two explicit functions solving the equation for y in terms of x. Well, if I have x squared plus y squared equals 64, I know explicit functions are of the form y equals. So let's solve for y by subtracting x squared from both sides. But then when we take the square root, we have to consider the positive and the negative square root. To find the derivative at this point, now I'd have to find two derivatives, both using the chain rule, Whereas, using implicit differentiation, I could get straight to dy dx in just a couple of steps rather than having to do two different derivatives. So let's do that again. 16y squared minus x squared equals 16. I want to first solve for y. So I'm going to add x squared to both sides. Get y squared by itself by dividing by 16. Divide everything. I just divided the right-hand side by 16. When you take the square root, you have to include plus or minus. So I'll have one function, explicit function, y equals the square root of 16 plus x squared all over 4. Notice I took the square root of 16, my denominator, so it's a rationalized denominator. And y equals negative square root of 16 plus x squared all over 4. Again, we'd have to find two derivatives now if we wanted to find dy dx. So let's leave that behind. Let's uh, find dy dx by implicit differentiation again and evaluate the derivative at the given point. So, same as before, only a final step of we're going to evaluate. If I have xy equals 6 at the point negative 6, negative 1, I use the product rule on the left. So x times dy dx plus y times 1, right, derivative of x is 1, equals, don't forget to take the derivative of the right-hand side. It won't always be a constant. It just seems like most of my examples right now are. 
So this equals zero. When I solve, right, I want to get dy dx by itself. So I'm going to take uh, subtract a y from both sides and then divide by x and I get dy dx equals negative y over x. That's my derivative. I found dy dx. Great. One thing done. And evaluate at the given point. Now notice this, this line, meaning evaluate at, instead of a single x value, I can actually put in both x and y. I have the point, I have the values, negative y, so negative negative 1, over x, negative 6. So that's three negatives make a negative 1 sixth. The slope of the tangent line to the graph of x, y equals 6. At the point negative 6, negative 1, we found that slope is a negative 1 sixth. Okay, no more constants on the right. x plus y all to the third equals x cubed plus y cubed. This is not true in general, it's just the function we're looking at. At the point negative 1, 1. On the left side, I have a chain rule, right? something to the third power. So the derivative of something to the third power is 3 something squared. And then we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of x is 1. The derivative of y is dy dx. On the right-hand side, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. The derivative of y cubed, using the chain rule, is 3y squared times dy dx, the derivative of the inside. We're going to distribute 1 times 3 times the quantity x plus y squared and dy dx times the quantity 3 times x plus y all squared. Leave the right hand side. The dy dx's I'm going to move to the left so I have 3 parentheses x plus y all squared dy dx. I'm going to subtract 3y squared dy dx from both sides. I'm going to leave my 3x squared on the right and I'm going to bring this term, the 3 parentheses x plus y close parentheses all squared to the right hand side by subtracting. Factor out the dy dx, divide by the coefficients with their appropriate signs. I encourage you not to get cancel happy uh, because other than a 3, there's not much that we can reduce or simplify at this stage. Leave it. Looks great. Oh, it doesn't look great. We have to finish the problem. We found dy dx. That's fantastic. But now we have to evaluate it. So don't forget to read the instructions like I just missed. So evaluating the derivative at the point negative 1, 1. I'll put in a negative 1 everywhere I see an x. I'll put in a positive 1 everywhere I see a y. And evaluate. I end up with 3 over negative 3, which is negative 1. Now let's find a second derivative. Find d squared y over dx squared in terms of x and y. Unfortunately, to find the second derivative, we have to find the first derivative. There's no shortcuts. Trust me, if there was, I would tell you. I would not lie to you about that. But this, we just have to suck it up and get through it. Here we go. Hold on. So we have a product rule. So x squared y squared. We're going to have x squared times 2y dx plus y squared times the derivative of the first, 2x. The derivative of minus 2x is a minus 2, and the derivative of the constant 3 is 0. Okay, not so bad. I only have one dy dx term, so I'm going to subtract 2xy squared from both sides. I'm going to add 2 to both sides, get the dy dx by itself. I'm going to divide by 2x squared y, and cancel the 2 out of everything in order to simplify dy dx equals 1 minus xy squared all over x squared y. All right, but I want to find the second derivative. This is the first derivative. Now I need to find the derivative of it. Okay, so to find the second derivative, we're going to use the quotient rule with some product rules thrown in. Let's look at the derivative of the numerator. The derivative of the numerator is derivative of 1 is 0, and then a minus sign, so we're going to subtract everything we get from the product rule. Derivative of xy squared is x, 2y dy dx, plus y squared times 1. All right, first, derivative of the second, plus second derivative of the first. 
I'm not going to simplify that yet. I'm just writing it down for right now. The derivative of the denominator, remember, quotient rule, we use parts of this in the formula, but we need each piece, so let's find it separately. Using the product rule, x squared y, the derivative will be x squared dy dx plus y times 2x. First, derivative of the second plus second derivative of the first. Now, think about what this says. The second derivative is quotient rule. Low, d high, so derivative of the numerator. Notice I rearranged my order, so it's a nice coefficient in alphabetic order here. Low d high minus high, my original numerator, times the derivative of low, all over low squared. But you know we're not finished. We're not finished because we still have a dy dx in a couple of places. So I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to replace dy dx with exactly what dy dx is. It's 1 minus xy squared. Both places. What do you think? Should we simplify this? I didn't think so. We didn't want to simplify that. That was nasty. Let's try another example instead. 1 minus xy equals x minus y. I want to find the second derivative. So derivative of 1 is 0 minus sign. And then the product rule, so I use parentheses. The derivative of xy is x dy dx plus y times 1 equals the derivative of x is 1 minus the derivative of y to dy dx. I distributed my negative sign, so I have a negative x dy dx. I'm going to add this dy dx to the left and to the right to balance it. I have a y, uh, excuse me, a 1 that's on the right hand side. And here, with distribution, I have a negative y, so when I move it to the right side of the equal sign, I'm going to have a positive y. Factor out the dy dx, and I'll have a positive 1 and a negative x in my denominator. That's my first derivative. We want to find the second derivative. To find the second derivative, I will have low d high, derivative of 1 is 0, derivative of y is dy dx minus high d low, the derivative of 1 minus x is negative 1, all over low squared. Replace dy dx with what we know it to be. 1 minus x cancels. I'll have 1 plus y minus a negative, so plus 1 plus y, that's where we get the 2 plus 2y, all over denominator squared. Last example, some of them can be a little quicker, and I'll change up my notation a little bit. y squared equals 10x. The derivative of y squared is 2y dy dx. Remember, chain rule. Anytime you find the derivative of a term involving y, there's going to be a dy dx. The derivative of 10x is 10. To get dy dx by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 2y, so dy dx is 5 over y. My second derivative if I wanted to look at this as a quotient rule, I could. So low y, derivative of high is 0, minus high, derivative of low, dy dx, over low squared. 0 times y is just 0. dy dx is 5 over y. This is negative 25 over y, divided by y squared, simplifies to be negative 25 over y cubed. In this particular case, the slope of the tangent line and the second derivative, neither one depend on the x value. But remember, y is implicitly defined by x, so y depends on the x value. Therefore, even though it doesn't explicitly state there's an x involved, we know we have to get there in order to find our y value. That's implicit differentiation. Thanks for listening.